So when we see a patient with uh, liver cancer, we're assessing both their underlying liver physiology and their tumor burden. When we're talking about a patient with advanced liver cancer, someone who's candidate for systemic therapy, uh, obviously they need to be able to come to clinic, they need to be functional, and they should have relatively preserved liver function, child pu A or child pu B that's under control. And you know, right now we've had one agent that's been shown to improve survival in advanced liver cancer, that's serafinib. That survival benefit has been maintained over almost a full decade now. And its survival benefit is proven in the child pu A group. And the group, tumor characteristics of these patients are patients who have disease outside the liver, metastatic disease. Also patients who have multifocal tumor in the liver uh, that is not amenable to chemoembolization or progressed after chemoembolization. Or patients who have liver confined disease and on imaging have evidence of tumor thrombus or tumor invasion into the portal vein or branches of the portal vein. All of these patients would be considered for systemic treatment either with serafinib or even uh, you know, a clinical trial. These are all characteristics of a patient with advanced disease that should receive systemic treatment. When we think about systemic therapy, we first have to acknowledge that HTC is a very chemo-resistant tumor. And for a long time, we did not have any systemic therapy available at all. And only with sorafenib, we had the first clinical trial in which we were able to achieve a survival benefit for patients with more advanced HTC with an increase in median overall survival of almost three months, months which is um, quite okay, I think. And with that, this is um, the standard of care for patients with advanced disease. When we think about the clinical trials that have been done, both in Caucasian patients and in Asian patients, these were also selected patients, in specifically in respect to the um, underlying liver disease. So we only, in these trials, only patients with a good liver function were included based on the child pu criteria, criteria and mainly or only um, child pu A patients were included. And I think this is the main and most important point today. In Germany, for example, we could also use sorafenib in patients with more advanced disease in child pu B uh, stage, for example. But the evidence we have is for patients with child pu A cirrhosis. And this is important because if the patient have more advanced disease, liver function is bad and the survival itself of the patient due to this poor liver function might also be impaired. And we do not really know whether we increase survival with, um, uh, when we treat our patients with a sorafenib. So when we think about systemic therapy, the most important point for our patient is that they are fit that they're, good, that they're in a good performance status and that the liver function um, is uh, adequate, which means they should be in child pu A cirrhosis. So for a patient who has intermediate stage liver cancer, that is to say liver cancer that's confined to the liver, they have a good performance status, the liver function is preserved, local regional therapies play a major role in controlling their disease. It's not a cure, but patients can live longer. It's been shown to improve survival, at least with chemoembolization. Radioembolization, there's no randomized data that shows that it does improve survival, just single arm phase two uh, studies. But since they're not cured with chemoembolization, almost every patient, if they live long enough, will develop advanced disease. That is to say, they'll de develop, de you know, develop disease outside the liver or they'll have a recurrence shortly after chemoembolization, and it's important for us to recognize that transition point from what we would call Barcelona stage B to Barcelona stage C. Uh, and that's that change from intermediate disease to advanced disease where we transition from local regional therapy to systemic therapy. And the cues for that are, as I mentioned, you know, development of disease outside the liver, or even more commonly, uh, development of multifocal disease within the liver or uh, vascular invasion in the liver. There's a bias, I think, that because the, <clears throat> the disease is still in the liver, there's a bias to still treat it with liver-directed therapy. But we need to recognize that the data supporting that as far as high level of evidence in those scenarios does not necessarily exist for local regional therapies, and it does exist for systemic therapy.